welcome to another edition of the Be Civil Podcast. My name is Matt Sutherland, I'm your host. And today I'm going to be sharing my personal experience with spirituality. Um, I was born into a Christian, a practicing Christian household. Uh, my father was the more uh, practicing Christian in um, our family. Uh, he wasn't the best example of Christianity. Um, there are a lot of uh, horrible things that my father did um, to our family, but um, you know there are things that were horrible at that time. And looking back, yes, they're still horrible. But um, I had to find it within my own heart to forgive him um, for himself, for myself, and um, I believe on a spiritual level for him as well. Um, so, um, yeah, was born into this Christian household, um, really strict. Um, I couldn't do things that my other friends could do as far as, uh, as far as a lot of things, but I think the big things were, uh, I would say like listening to music it had to be like some type of like Christian, uh, background artist, um, listening to music. Um, even hanging out with certain friends, you know, are they Christian or, you know, certain, I just had to be Christian all across the board for the most part. And, uh, you know, as moving forward in this practice, I also, you know, was aware that, you know, these are things that, you know, I'm learning about Christianity, I'm learning about love, I'm learning about, um, uh, charity, I'm learning about, just being a good person and also I'm learning about having a connection with God. And then there was an example that I was growing up with that was um, preaching it, but wasn't practicing it. And it was really, uh, I want to say like uh, very confusing and um, also very uh, just jarring. I would say growing up and having this, uh, person preaching this um, message to me and my family um, and not being the example that I needed to see. Um, so, or not being the example of what was being preached. So, um, you know, moving forward into my life, uh, you know, my, my dad was actually very abusive. He would um, beat my mom. He would beat my brothers and sisters. Um, you know, it was overall just very abusive. Um, and um, yeah, like I said, it made it very difficult to um, have this uh, connection period, you know, like where it's like praying to God for peace, praying for to God that you know, my father wouldn't act this way. And then, um, you know, seeing him do it continuously. And I'm just like, you know, is there a God? I'm praying that, you know, God will uh, keep this from happening, you know, keep my family protected and in peace and in a happy place. And then, you know, like, where are you, God? Like, you know, so, but I felt the connection myself. Um, I always felt connected to God. Um, and it's something that I feel like I was just born with. I just always had this awareness and that feeling that there was something greater than just this like flesh body that I have. And I felt like there was something that other people possessed as well that was showing me, um, what this connection was also. So, um, you know, I went to, I went to, uh, church growing up. I went to a lot of different denominations. I would say Baptist was the number one. Um, then I feel like moving forward in life, it kind of turned into more of like a non-denominational church setting. Um, and um, I enjoyed 
the diversity of the non-denominational church setting. Um, I enjoyed all the different cultures of people. I, I enjoyed um, just more of a loose feeling of Christianity. There weren't any uh, rules as far as, um, you know, how you can express yourself. Like, it's like everyone didn't have to, like, sit still and, you know, have their hands folded. It was more of like, you know, an expressive or, you know, you can be emotional. So, um, you know, at whatever end of the spectrum, you know, you can sit down and cross your hands or you could, you know, jump up and roll around on the ground if you want. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was uh, that connection with God that I was always uh, longing for. And, um, you know, I got baptized when I was, say, mm, my early 20s, uh, probably 23, 24 years old, I got baptized. Um, and, you know, that was my symbol of, um, you know, being uh, a devout follower of Christianity. Um, and um, I learned a lot of great things um, through my Christian experience. I learned about forgiveness. Um, you know, like I said, um, growing up, I had this abusive father and, um, you know, it was very difficult to see the light because I always had this uh, chaos going on in my home growing up. So, um, you know, I finally, um, did see the light, I would say, um, through, uh, my own pursuit of. Uh, my connection with God and with Christ. Um, and I became a Christian um, and I followed uh, the Christian religion very seriously, very um, wholeheartedly. Um, and then uh, as I moved forward with that, I felt like it just, things didn't add up sometimes you know with i would say um throughout the body of christ which is the followers of christ i felt like people were very judgmental and i felt like it was the absolute opposite of what jesus preached so um you know it made it gave me also like like i said like that confusion where i was like you know here's the faith here is God, um, here's my faith, here's what I believe in, and then here, is, here are these people that are showing me something totally opposite of that. They're not showing me love, they're showing me um, the opposite. So um, it was very uh, difficult to navigate through um, being a, a follower and wholeheartedly wanting to follow this religion and um, you know seeing all the other followers not uh, living up to what I felt a true follower of Jesus Christ was so um as I kept moving forward I just with you know Christianity I just um, I also came into some conflict with parts of the um, parts of scripture that I felt like didn't resonate with a God that was all loving, um, a God that was lo unconditionally loving. Um, I feel like the concept of hell to me um, was something that I didn't feel like was right. Um, as far as, um, you know, it didn't feel right as far as there's this God that has unconditional love for all of creation. And if you don't say a prayer a certain way, or if you don't, um, believe, um, a certain thing, then you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn forever. And, you know, regardless if you've ever heard of this information also. And, um, so, um, 
And then, I, you know, I met so many good people in my life that were just genuinely wonderful people. And I would look at them and I'd be like, so according to this religion, this person is going to hell. And that didn't resonate with me. That didn't feel right. So I don't really have a certain time in mind which, in which I left Christianity. But for me, it just wasn't adding up. And um, later on in life, I was, I just became more of a, uh, an observer, I would say, but still kept Christianity as my foundational faith. Like I still believed um, in uh, forgiveness. I still believed in, um, you know, a non-judgmental, a uh, positive mind mindset. Um, I still believed in love being the uh, the ultimate power of the universe. So all of these things to me, you know, I still kept them within me. And to me, those things came from Jesus Christ or Christianity, the teachings of the Bible. So um, things that I did learn from Christianity, I always kept within me, and I still do to this day. The things that I feel like resonate with me, I keep that. I feel like Jesus to me was um, just someone that was so in touch, so in tune with God um, that he, you know, literally uh, performed miracles. I'm not sure to what extent they were, um, you know, as you read about them turning water into wine. Um, you know, we're talking about like alchemy, <laughs> um, which, you know, like I said, I'm not sure to what level or how they looked, but these were miracles that people were, um, just amazed by and, um, that, you know, are very significant in building your faith. These are stories that, you know, give us faith. So after a while, I would say in my late 20s, like I said, I, I became more of an observer of life, just watching people, um, watching people of different religions, watching people of different um, spiritual um, followings. Uh, this is the time when I moved from Lynchburg, Virginia to um, Washington, D.C., the D.C. area. I lived in College Park, Maryland. I was going to school in D.C. So I was going to the Aveda Institute, actually, uh, for cosmetology. Um, before then, I had been a barber for 11 years. So I ended up, um, you know, just moving to a place that, was more diverse um, culturally, spiritually. So I got to see more of like real life move on a day to day. So as these days were going by and as this time was going by, I just saw more of a real life instead of like what I was learning in this bubble of the Bible Belt, basically. Um, I basically was able to form my own ideas about Christianity and my own form my beliefs based on my own experiences. Um, and also truly like leaving my comfort zone and going into something new for myself, I think was a big deal. And it was a way that I became connected with myself and recognize that inner strength that I needed to have on a day to day to be focused on my goals, um, to be um, just to have that inner strength, just that, that inner knowing of who I am was just building day and day and day and day out. So after I left, DC after I graduated from 
Aveda, I moved to New York, and that is where my spiritual life really began to turn into something totally different. Um, it started to like really um, expand as far as things that I was learning. Um, I started to learn just from different people that I would interact with, uh, just about positive thinking, um, just the ability to, you know, when you have a, a uh, negative thought, any type of negative thought, like, oh man, you know, someone just uh, bumped into me really hard and, you know, they didn't acknowledge it and, you know, fuck them, <laughs> you know. Um, instead of being like that, you know, just any type of positive thought coming to mind um, will keep that vibration of positivity within you. So I learned to really do that just to like keep the positive mindset, keep my vibration up. And that is something that really helped me. Um, but along the way, I still felt like I needed some type of structure because I came from like that religious world, which isn't a bad world at all. It's a good world. It helped me to become who I am now. And it, you know, I, I've adopted beliefs from the faith that I've been involved with. But at that time, I felt like I still needed some type of religious structure or identity because that's where I came from. So I was introduced to uh, Nietzsche and Buddhism by a, a neighbor that lived upstairs from me. And um, I went to a Buddhist meeting with him. He invited me. He said, would you like to go to a Buddhist meeting with me? And I was like, yeah. So I um, went with him to this Buddhist meeting. And I just liked the feel of it. Um, it was in um, someone's house who was uh, a sponsor of this um, certain area. So he would have Buddhist meetings in his living room. And um, it was just like a fellowship of Buddhists and people saying how, you know, this Buddhism was helping them in their life. And at, at the end of, at the end of the uh, Buddhist meeting were the chants and um, the main chant of Nichiren Buddhism is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. And I remember taking part in the chant. They started off slow, so all the new people could, you know, get the hang of it. And then it start, you know, going fast, going faster, faster, faster. And um, I just really loved how it felt as the chant was going. So as I felt this energy within the chant, within this community of people, I was like, wow. This is something that I want to keep doing. This is awesome. I felt it very reviving and I felt it very empowering as well. So I ended up joining um, SGI and becoming a Nichiren Buddhist. And um, I got the Gohanzen, which is a, um, it's a, uh, it's a scroll inside of a, uh, box and you open the box and the scroll represents your inner self or represents your spirit so you open the box and there are also beads that you rub together and then you chant nam myoho renge kyo in front of it and you just keep chanting it over and over and over and over nam myoho renge kyo nam myoho renge kyo nam myoho renge kyo and you keep chanting it chanting it chanting it and when you chant you also go into, um, you tap your inner self, basically. You tap into your inner self and you, whatever you think of or whatever, whatever you're focusing of, something that you want to manifest, you basically put it out there to your highest self and then your highest self will bless you with that thing. And that definitely manifested for me some things. Um, and I really appreciate that um, energy that I was feeling as I was chanting. 
Um, but as I kept going through with it, it just, for me, I feel like I love the Japanese culture and I love the Japanese language, but I felt like to, there was some chance that I had to learn and get a deeper, to get like a, there were just chants that went along with the Nami Horenge Kyo and they were very long and it was all in Japanese and I was just like, I shouldn't have to learn a language to, you know, get this deeper connection with my spirit. Um, I felt like, I felt like tapping into God or my inner self should be as easy as knocking on the door, you know? So, um, from that moment on, it was kind of like Christianity. I still kept that, you know, I would chant every now and then, but I wasn't fully active in Nichiren Buddhism and I still identified as a Nichiren Buddhist. But I was searching for something else. I was searching for something deeper. Um, not only deeper, but just something that was simpler, honestly. Something that I felt like I didn't have to um, perform so much with or learn something totally outside of who I was um, to have this connection. So I ended up going to Thailand on a solo trip in 2018. And on the trip, I visited a lot of different Buddhist temples and you know I would pay homage every time I went and I would um, you know have my moment with Buddha <laughs> or with my inner self and um, you know acknowledge the Buddha and I felt like there was something that I wanted to discover on that trip as well, but I just didn't really know what it was. So I went to Chiang Mai, Thailand from Bangkok the second day that I was in Thailand and went to Chiang Mai. And when I got to Chiang Mai, I went to my hotel, dropped off everything, my bag and everything. And then I was hungry and there were all types of cafes and restaurants and whatever alongside the street that I was on in my hotel and uh, there was a barber shop so I went inside the barber shop and um, I asked the barber that was in there what a good place to eat was because barbers know <laughs> we know like where all the good food spots are <laughs> you know barber lunches are the best hands down <laughs> so he told me that there was an Indian restaurant across the street and that was the place to go. So I went there. I love Indian food. So I went there to this Indian restaurant and I sat down eating alone. And then a guy walks in and he sits, he smiles at me and he sits down and I was like, Oh, you know, smile back. Seemed like a traveler or someone that just lived in Thailand. Wasn't sure, you know, what his deal was, but you know, I'm eating my food and the food is delicious. I'm just enjoying the atmosphere. And I hear this guy speaking, he picked up his phone, he was speaking in Spanish, like perfectly. And then he puts his phone down, then he was, then he started speaking English. And then he picked up his phone, then he started speaking in Thai. And then after that, I was like, whoa, I was like, that's really impressive. So I spoke to him, I was like, hey man, I was like, that is really impressive that you could speak, you know, three languages perfectly like that. It's awesome. And he was like, oh, man, you know, he started laughing. And he was like, you want to join me? And I was like, yeah. So sat down with him. We started talking. And he was like, yeah, I'm a former Buddhist monk. And um, I have a meditation class. You should come tomorrow morning. And I was like, oh, man, that sounds awesome. That sounds really cool. I knew that there was something that I, it just added up after. I was like, this is probably what the gem that I've been trying to find. So. Um, that next morning, I ended up uh, 
heading to the meditation class. And I remember there were just so many obstacles in the way of me getting to this class. Um, for some reason, uh, I just couldn't seem to get there. Like there were like transportation wise, I couldn't get a taxi, an Uber. I couldn't, uh, I tried to get a tuk-tuk, but it was, all the tuk-tuks were going in the opposite direction. And then I ended up texting him and I was like, hey, you know, sorry, I don't think I'm going to make the class and you know, I don't want to get there late. And he was like, no, come, it's okay. He's like, you know, just get there when you get there. And I was like, okay, cool. So finally found a tuk-tuk um, that was going in the direction I needed to. So I get on the tuk-tuk and I get there. I walk in and there's two other people that are kneeling and meditating with him. And, uh, you know, he tells me to join and I get down and uh, start meditating. And he's guiding the meditation and I was just totally, man, I just felt like I totally found the connection that I was looking for. I felt like I totally, I finally found that inner peace, that inner, that place that I could always go to, to find rest and peace and the feeling of love unconditional love I've been, I've been meditating ever since and it's been the greatest connection it's been the greatest tool in my life that I have to move forward day to day and to keep me connected with my inner self and that sense of peace and that sense of love and that sense of purpose. And I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful for where I was before then. I was, I'm so grateful for the journey. I'm so grateful for the mentors that I had in Christianity, the people of, of light that were sent to me when I had those uh, bad examples, the friends that I had that to this day I know are still true followers of Christ. Um, I'm grateful for the connection I had with my inner self, with Nietzsche and Buddhism. I felt like that was, that was like kind of the step ladder to uh, the independent spiritual path that I lead today. And man, I just, I really um, urge everyone to try meditation. Um, it, it, it's just, I can't live without it. It's the first thing that I do. It's usually the first thing I do every day. If I don't do it as soon as I wake up, then I do it before I leave the house. If I don't do it before I leave the house, then I definitely do it in that chair right over there. Um, either before my clients or in between clients. It's something I have to do every day to uh, feel that connection, that sense of peace, that sense of joy, that sense of love that is always within me and that is within us all. And I have a video, it's a how to meditate video. You can find that in my video library and um, I encourage you to watch it and um, start meditating. Start meditating for try just meditating for a minute just close your eyes be still and breathe in and breathe out and just do it naturally um do it for a minute and see how you feel and then work your way up to five minutes 
After five minutes, work your way up to 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, work your way up to 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, work yourself up to 20 minutes. And to me, um, I usually meditate for 10 minutes. That gets me to the place that I feel like it gives, that's the time in which I feel like I get to where I need to go meditating. But um, I love meditating for 20 minutes. That's, I feel like the more time that you get within that 10 to 20 minute range, I feel like that's a really good range to do consistently all the time and uh, turn it into a practice that'll change your life. Thank you for watching this edition of Be Civil. Um, please uh, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Namaste.